like to call the meeting to order at 6.30. Do we have any additions to the agenda? I see none from the select board memo. Do we have any from anybody else? Don't say anything. Uh, <laughs> no, nothing? Okay. Um, review of minutes, January 17th. I have a small correction, I think, if I if I understand the dynamics of the fake checks correctly. It's on page three under the town treasurer report. Uh, it said that Chair Gardner asked if the bank account is still receiving fake checks. I believe it'd be more accurate to say that Chair Gardner asked whether fake checks are still being written against the town's account. I probably said fake check. That's just short. But no, it's this question of what the fake checks are, and I'm looking at Gina for um, for help on that. I think it's accurate to say that Chair Gardner asked whether fake checks are still being written against the town's account. Is that correct? Fake checks are being presented. They are not necessarily being posted against the account. Right. Right. So, however, we want to word that. Right. It's not that somebody's sending fake checks right. to us, but they are fake. They're posing as our checks. To banks. Right. Right. So, are still being presented uh, 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 on the town's account, or how, how would you phrase that? Well, I mean, they're presented to, I, I don't want anyone to think that the checks are actually getting cashed. Absolutely. Um, so. Fake town checks are still being. I mean, they're fraudulent specific. checks. So, yes. um, I mean, they're being presented for payment, yet payment is being declined yep. and denied. Mm -hmm. So getting presented fraudulent checks? Pardon? Is still getting presented fraudulent checks? That's basically yeah, cool. well, that it, work. It, it's not a bank account that's being presented. This, this well, account. China is. They are. Right. Yeah. They're showing up in account for us to approve yeah. or reject. Right. Rejecting. Right. I just want to make it clear that they're written on our account. They purport to be written on our account rather than people they're putting bills to us. Yes. Bank account. Yes. yes. To present these checks. Yes. Counterfeit town checks are still turning up. How they're not that? counterfeit town checks. How would you well, describe it? Uh, uh, first of all, shouldn't we just represent what the chair actually said instead of what your yeah. interpretation of what he said is? Well, I think the chair knew what he was talking about, and this these minutes do not reflect that. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can come across as someone that's uneducated and know what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, Seth, stop. I probably that. said fake checks. Yeah. Well, no, they, they were fake checks. Yeah, that, exactly. I, I'm, I'm not disagreeing yeah. with fake checks. Right, 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 right. I want to make clear that they were fake checks. Yeah, yeah. No, I know account. what you're doing. Right, yeah. right, right. It's well, not like it's, we're getting payment. Exactly. We're not getting payment. Right. And taking you fake can, checks from people that are making payments. Right. We're actually getting presented against our account. Right. So I don't know how you're going to say that. But, well, maybe just say what you just said. Put in parentheses. Um, ask if the bank account is getting presented fraudulent checks by the, the it, bank. Yeah. It's actually the bank. Yeah. Bank is receiving. Uh, fraudulent checks that are written against the town account is what it is. That actually. are attempting to be written against the town account or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that works. That works. Yeah. Good. All right. Say it again what? for me one more time. Asked if the bank um, is still getting checks that are written against, uh, fraudulent checks that are written against the town account. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That are attempting to, well, you're, whatever you said is cool. You know, I, whatever you said was fine. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> that are attempting to be issued against or presented against the town account, something like that. The use of attempt is because it is an attempt, they are not successful. Yeah. yeah. So it'd be the bank. Yeah, I don't want residents to get concerned that, you know, I know. Yeah. we're actually cashing checks against where the town is losing money because we are. Uh, Dia, exactly. did you have all that? <laughs> uh, it's, I'm sorry, it's a little muddled. Uh, Chair asked if the bank account is still getting fraudulent checks attempted <laughs> against the town account. Attempting to be issued or deposited against the, the town account, something like that. I mean, I deposited that one. 
And right, so I had. Yeah. Do you want to read what you have now, Deidre? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, Chair Gardner asked if the bank account is still getting fraudulent checks attempting to be deposited against the town account. Cash against it. It should be cash. Cash. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It should be okay. cash. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Okay. That's perfect. That's a great sense. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and a very astute question. <laughs> I'm glad you raised it. <laughs> okay. So uh, is that, wait a minute, Carl, you do that, have any that, more? That was all okay. Right. And then, yeah, I, Judith has I have, something. I have, um, Two things. One is um, during the discussion of, with the cemetery committee to review the fiscal year 2024 budget request. Um, at the end of it, regard the, the second paragraph. Um, it, I think it's it's Mr. Morse, not Ms. Morse, but I don't want to assume. But I think it's Mr. Morse in the last sentence. It's right now. It says Ms. Morse. Unless yep. it was Miss Morse who said yeah, that. It was. She spoke okay. up at that moment to talk about uh, it. Got, request got it. But, but I also it. thought that, did they say that the um, individual may still request granite corner markers if they prefer, but I thought they would have to be responsible for the cost? Was that said? I, I, I have Please. a recollection of that. Am I wrong? If I am, that's fine. Because it's so much Amen. more expensive. That if they wanted it, they would need to pay for it. The granite corners. No, That's the. The the Ms. Ms. Moore said the individuals may still request granite corner markers if they prefer. I wasn't clear on who was paying for that. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I thought I thought there was a representation that um, mm -hmm. the individual would have to pay, but maybe that was my- um, I'm not my sure answer. about that. Okay, that's a, that's, all right. That's a good question because in okay. the budget, it did not reflect that cost. Right. The yeah. budget was yeah. way low for the markers. Yeah. It was 150 bucks. Well, they've yeah. been using metal markers is what it said. They are now. Yeah. But I, I don't really, okay. They're I, I wanted to talk to him about that actually. Okay, about all right, markers. well- is the, China, and I'm not yeah, in China. So, so that's an unknown. That's something we'd want to kind of figure out. But the last one regarding the warrants, and this is cr crucial. I think it was um, Ms. Willis, not myself, who asked about the mushroom shoe purchase. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that is it correct. was me. And I noticed that in the notes, I was just going to let it go because, you know, it could be anybody. <laughs> who knows what a mushroom <laughs> shoe is? Correctly attribute that. So. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knew except maybe Seth, so it's okay. <laughs> okay, so um, is, is that it? Yes. So I have one, just a typo it's on the second page. Chair Gardner, after the present board members, it should be Chair Gardner. It's in uh, under the discussion finalization FY 2024 budget development. It's yeah. the paragraph, last paragraph in that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Could be a D. Uh, anything else? Anybody have any other suggestions? I wasn't here. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. <laughs> you guys barely made it through, Yeah. No, no, I wasn't. We, we, <laughs> we kept asking, John. what would John say? No, it was the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if we don't have any more corrections or um, discussion items on the minutes, we probably ought to think about um, accepting those. I move to accept the minutes as amended. Oh. He's not surprised. No, that's fine. <laughs> uh, but typically we get a second, but I don't hear one. So we'll just wait. Oh, do it a second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Yeah, aye. And, and aye. since I wasn't here, I should have stayed. Um, no, you can go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The eyes have it. They appear to have it. They do have it. Okay. Um, sounds good. Public comment. We have some public here. No. Are you public? One public. Do you have anything to say? Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> public comment. Very short. Um, okay. Right on time. Finalization of FY 2024 budget. Uh, so I was wondering if Gina, we should talk about um, 
it's not going to really change our budget, but the ARPA um, go around that we talked about that might be able to use on certain items a one time. Just well, to keep the budget up. Well, it's just because the school has got a huge increase. Yes. And the municipal side it does too. Um, so we can use ARPA money for certain items. Yeah. We have not identified specifically how that would come into play, but the idea that Seth mentioned was when we spoke last week, whenever it was, I think. Yeah. Whenever it was. Whenever it was. Um, that possibly would something the board like to consider would be to pull back a little bit on what we budget for a capital reserve contribution in fiscal 24 with the idea that ARPA funds are available and should be able to cover some costs. We need to identify all of this, but then hopefully we could get that back and kind of bring fiscal 24, bring that capital reserve back up once we get this all ironed out. Well, it so can we, be certain things. It, 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 if you have a shortfall, list. if mean, you have a shortfall on salaries, for instance, correct. You can you can put take ARPA money to cover that shortfall. We have the digitization of land records. Yeah, that is, can be covered. So it's it's the the ability to use ARPA funds is fairly broad. Michelle and I need to dig into the details and start to specifically identify these items. But the idea was: is there a way to make some adjustments to the budget to have to, to mitigate some of the increase in the tax rates with the plan that we could fill this hole essentially um, with you ARPA funds. Reimburse yourself, basically. Correct, yeah. So before we go any further on the budget discussion, I have had trouble getting the draft budget off of the website. Uh, I'm wondering if our two remote members have been able to access that file. Say that again, Carl, please. When you go to the website for today's meeting, have you been able to get the draft budget down successfully? I was earlier, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm looking at it right now. So, yes. Okay. okay, it was an intermittent problem for me. Never mind. Thank you. So, John, you wanted to say something? I just, from my experience, um, cutting back on capital on a capital uh, reserve input is not a really good idea. Because next time you decide, say you take you cut fifteen thousand out of the input this year, um, and you're not using ARPA money to make it up, right? You would turn around if you cut it this year. Then next year, if you decide you're going to put it back in, that's a fifteen thousand dollar increase. Yeah, but yeah. it's not a fifteen thousand dollar increase if you leave it the same. No, no, we know that. But well, I just but, want to make sure. Everybody... No, no, but it isn't specific to the capital reserve. This concept is on a budget line that we can reimburse ourselves with ARPA money to keep the tax rate relatively manageable for this year, just this year, because the school is nine cents or 10 cents. I'd recommend doing it on line items, not yeah. on reserve fund. No, no, we, we, we want to identify which items we can do. Right. But the thing about building the budget right now is it's going to give us a six cent increase. But if we're going to do the shortfall, then we've got to reduce our budget now. So you're going into the budget year already building a, maybe a deficit in there, and then you can reimburse it with the ARPA money. That's a good idea. Yeah, that's so you leave it the same and don't fund it all. You can't fund it all the way. You don't do exactly. the total increase in your budget to cover exactly. It. And so you, you take certain lines that you know you can reimburse yourself with ARPA money, right. and you and you keep those the same, or do whatever you've got to do to massage it down a little bit. So our tax increases two or three cents instead of the six cents that we're talking I agree about. With that. Because, you know, they're already, I mean, everybody I've run into in East Montpelier is like, oh my God, did you read the paper? I'm like, yeah, you know, blah, blah, blah. They're like nine and a half cents. I mean, they are freaking out. But that, that's, that's, that's not our nine and a half cents. That's the school that we have nothing to do with, no control. We can control the municipal side of it. So just doing that, if we build, you know, a shortfall that we can reimburse ourselves with ARPA money and figure out what that is, and then move forward. So that's why this budget, I'm saying we should build it a little leaner on those line items that we can reimburse. And it's yeah. a shell game, is basically what it is. What's tough is we have to finalize this budget tonight. To I know. Then to all yeah. of the and identify all the specifics. We just don't have a time to do that to get yeah. into that level of detail. So we have to right do that because it's going in town report. 
Yeah. Okay. Going on the ballot. What's that? I said it's going on the ballots tomorrow yeah. morning. That budget. Think, yeah. Right. I have to find. I'm, I have this set up tonight. Yeah. So that I can make any changes we want to make, so that I can get yeah. both Deb and Rosie everything as quickly as possible tomorrow morning. Ugh. So for Michelle and I to have time to analyze ARPA. Yeah. And analyze it. That's not. Gonna yeah, happen. not going to happen. Are yeah. there any line items that are just so clearly over in the? Well, area salaries. that this qualifies for our plan. Salaries. I'm, I'm almost 100% I'm a big sure. fan of adjusting line items because that makes it hard to analyze your numbers later. In okay. my experience, when you make an adjustment like this, you make a top side adjustment. Um, oh, just example, go. We can eliminate just the cut it by $50,000 yeah. cash on hand number, and that would then. Basically, John, this isn't carrying through quite right. So it's basically on the spending side that you will be able to reimburse yourself after the car force has already left, basically. Mm -hmm. The money's already left. If you understand. And you're that. like, oh boy, uh oh, we're short, we're short. When so, you go back and analyze your budget, you're going to know that that year was an odd year, and that's why the numbers were artificially. But well, we already know the salaries are right. way higher than they have right. been just because of what we've had to do in the town office. But they're going to continue to be yeah. higher. What's that, Judith? They're going to continue to be higher year after year, and we're not going to have this piggy bank to draw from. And there's going to come a day where we're going to yeah. have to raise the, you know, raise the rates to what they actually should be. I think, you know, I, I do appreciate that it's a big hit, but it's it's reflecting what's going on in the world and the economy and to the school. And, you know, if we can reimburse, fine, but I don't feel comfortable making the changes that are being discussed tonight for a quick turnaround tomorrow morning um, to go out to our voters. I don't feel comfortable. I don't feel confident enough in my knowledge of the distribution of the ARPA funds, whether or how we'll be able to use them as we're anticipating tonight, kind of on the fly using them. I would my recommendation is we've been working on this budget for, you know, almost two months, if not more, that, you know, the public unfortunately has been or has been notified about what the increase is going to be. And there's going to come a time when the increase is going to happen. It's either going to be now or three years from now. Our salaries are not going down. They're going to go up in the future. And, you know, this is what the reality is. Um, so my my, uh, I'm leaning, if anyone's doing a poll, is not to make any changes in our budget to kind of do a quick and fast switcheroo um, tonight. One question that I had that I never did ask you, Seth, is what would be considered a palatable increase? Well, wait a minute. Let's just talk about this. The reason that I brought this up is the school is going up about 10 cents. Or is it around 10 cents? I, I think it turns out to be about 10 cents. It's like, okay. It's like, yes. The reason the school is going up 10 cents is one of the reasons is a common level of appraisal. Our common level of appraisal has dropped because properties are selling for way more than they're paid for. What that does is trigger a townwide reappraisal. When our appraisal comes more in line with what properties are sell for, the school gives more, the school gets more money from the state. Okay, so the increase that they're facing might be a one-time increase. I'm, I don't know that, but because our CLA is so out of line and it will come back in line, that may trigger more money from the state, which is last year, the school rate actually dropped several cents. Mm -hmm. This year it's up 10 cents. So I'm not saying, all I'm saying is the school accounts for a large part of the money that we charge our tax rate. Our municipal rate is about a fifth of the whole tax dollar. So if we can massage it down one year in response to the school, and then we can increase it in further years when the school is more in line with where it should be, it'll just help the taxpayers. Because right now we're looking at 15, 16 cents in the tax rate if we go with the six cents and they're 10 cents. Yes, sir. So... Correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. I shall. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I don't think the CLA and the school is going to affect people's bottom line in a way that 
makes us need to do anything to help out on that. Let, and let me put out the argument here. Uh, people don't pay a tax rate. People pay taxes. They pay a tax bill. Uh -huh. And the tax bill is based on the appraised value of their property and the CLA. Uh -huh. And uh, if the state makes an adjustment... Well, they don't pay tax to the CLA. That's nothing to do with it. Nothing. Yeah. The amount of taxes that you pay on $100,000 of property mm -hmm. as appraised by the town is affected by the CLA. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> the CLA affects what the school gets for money from the state. But the CLA Which affects... is based on your values of your property in right. your town. And the the CLA is based on what you sell your property. No, it's what no. it's appraised for. Uh-uh. No. Yeah, appraised for versus what it sells for. for. That's exactly what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, that's what it is. So if everybody's house is appraised lower yeah. um, than what the houses are selling for, then right. they're being CLA taxed at a, lower, at a lower level than right. everybody else would be in the neighboring towns. Right. So that's we, why they want it to be in like in a 90 percent house, so you're close or 100 Right. So we get, yeah. to, a, we get to a new Wait. appraisal. And so let, let me finish yeah, okay. here. Okay. We get to a new appraisal here, mm -hmm. and people's tax rate will go down all yeah. other things being equal, but the right. amount of taxes they pay is not going to go down. That's right. So Correct. I don't think that we need to take uh, issues with the CLA into consideration in figuring out how we're going to distribute taxes over the next The CLA years. affects what the school gets. Yes. That, that's my perception. Yes, sir. Two points. Thanks. Yeah. Dr. Duane. Um, the school budget is proposed to go, the budget is supposed to go up 9.9%. Yes. But that transfers to cent that, is, a, is somewhat less. Than yeah, that. And I, um, if it's, yeah, yes. Yeah. And 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 each town is going to be different. Yeah. And so, uh, I, and I was at the last meeting. They had a chart, without going on too much here. If you have a two hundred fifty thousand dollar house in Callis, you're going to pay a different tax rate than a two hundred fifty thousand dollar house in East Montpelier because of the CLA. Yeah, the and CLA is, is yeah is affecting yeah. the the actual tax bill that you get, even though so it's the same school district. Even though it's the same school district with the same value of home, mm -hmm. you're going to get a different tax bill because of the CLA, depending on what town you're in. Yeah, my perception of the CLA is a is if. if it's a ratio between what houses sell for yes. and what is priced for. Yep. When and the state takes that into account yes. when it makes payments to the school. That's how it affects your tax rate. Yeah. And, and, and if your time, CLA is eighty yeah. percent, they're going to give you less money. Yeah. So in the five towns, because you're a rich town. In the five towns, <laughs> you don't need money. Yeah. The CLA is different in all five of the towns. Right. Because, because they're sell for different money. Because of the difference between the appraised value. Yes. And the selling. Yes. Value. Yeah. And that yes. That's how it affects your tax rate, yeah. but not it doesn't get applied to the $2.50 that you're paying as a tax rate. The CLA does not come into that. It comes into the school side of it, not the municipal side of it. No, no, not the municipal. Right. No, not the municipal side no. at all. No. It's all about the school. The educational tax rate. Right. And right yeah. now, last year, the school got more money from the state, so that dropped the rate what the town had to pay. Because we got more money. The educational so, tax rate has gone down every yes. one of the last six years except for one year. And it's not going down this year. No. Right. So that's what I'm saying is because there's a spike in the school taxes to keep the municipal rate down as much as we could because it does affect your tax bill. Yeah. It does. It affects your tax bill at the end of the day. So if they're going up six cents and we're going up six cents, that's 12 cents on $2.60 that's what it is. So I was thinking if we could keep ours down to three cents, that's going to help the taxpayer. And what would ours normally be? About two cents. No, what would would it be if we didn't make the cut? Six cents. So then you would apply that three right. three cents over the next year, or would you spread it out over a two years? Well, if we're at three cents now, which is a cent higher than we usually are, next year we can incrementally raise it to more realistic level, especially if the school is not going to go up the nine cents. But they might continue to go up. Yeah, I, and not if our CLA is more in line, is what I'm saying, is we have to have a reappraisal right now. We have to, because yeah. it's down to 80%. It's down below 90, we have to have a reappraisal. I think it's 85 is a cutoff. Yeah, it, it makes sense. 90, it makes sense to me for us 
to, and this is how we've always done it, as I've understood our discussion over the last decade, is uh, for us to try to manage our own fiscal house, mm -hmm. let the school manage their, their own fiscal house, and not to make changes to our budget based on what's happening. But we still the set the tax rate at the end of the day. We set the tax rate to gather the money. We do a computation of the tax rate based on what the school has done and what we yeah, have done. what we need for money. Yeah. And we set the tax rate. We are responsible for setting the tax rate. To collect, gather the money. We have, to no, choice. The money we the have no choice in that other than we do. looking at our budget and looking at the school's budget. We have nothing. We cannot do anything about the school. Exactly. Right. The only thing is, what we can do, we can affect our side. The 60-something cents. Either 68 cents or 62 cents or whatever. They are going to be at Two dollars or whatever. And I think we need to look at our own needs and uh, what. But we are responsible for setting the tax rate. People look to us. We are not responsible for the school's budget. We're responsible. We're not, but that's a hard to explain to people. And that's that's true. But yeah, we so, stand but our job is to explain it. We still send tax bills. We are responsible. So a CLA below eighty five percent. Okay, that triggers. Uh, yeah, but well, we're below the eighty five. Yeah, we, we need to do a reappraisal. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what the percentage is. Though. We've already been, the, the, there was a letter that came in and we have been notified by the state. I mean, I, I realize it's late to the game. Yeah. I didn't realize that we had to have a plan. I, know, I mean, I know Deb's got to put the town report together and this is our budget. However. So one way to do this would be, we always have a top line number in our budget that is yep. available cash on hand. Yep. And what that number is, it's kind of, at least the way I, I think is that's almost what your theoretical, you know, surplus you may carry from one year. Is that the fund balance had in the past? Huh? Is that the fund balance is what Basically, you're talking about? Yeah. But wait a minute, we have taken a fund balance and applied it to the next year's budget We've so, many times. Yeah. So it's, it was a hundred in fiscal 22. It was 150 in the fiscal 23 budget. If yep. we were to raise that to 250 in the fiscal 24 budget, then the tax rate would um it'd be 2.65 cents okay now wait so uh, on the fund balance that are you talking about the money that we have taken that surplus and put it built it into our budget have we have we taken that money for this this year that we're in right now i don't believe so i don't believe no. we have no we did not have a surplus last year so okay so we don't have a surplus but the fund balance most of your auditors are going to recommend between five percent ten percent of your we, budget we have of your budget. Oh, wait a minute we have a reserve fund that's okay. separate from that all right that's that's yeah. what i call fund balance is the, is the money you have as your reserve fund it's no. not your capital reserve right it's, no no it's a reserve no, fund this is a general are... fund this is all a right. general fund so it's five, it's gonna have between it. five and ten percent of your budget and we have that already okay we that's have what... a reserve fund that we established a few years ago we put money into that and that's funded i just want to make sure that. that okay we're talking about money that's been extra that we added into our budget from year to year because there was extra money to sitting there yeah it's not in a fund balance all right in a, in a dedicated fund balance called a reserve continuous a contingency right. fund for that and it's when you yeah. chose to do is nothing you have to do yeah, but we did that. Right. Yeah, we okay. had a lot of money laying around. Let's put that in a reserve fund, a contingency fund. Okay. So we have that money. This is not that same money. This is money that's usually rolled over from year to year as extra money. Yeah, and I'm not 100% sure how those transactions occur in the general ledger. I'm still trying to figure out some. Well, that's what we usually call the fund balance. This is uh, what you have left over from year to year, and it builds up. We're using different terms, too. I know. <laughs> So that to me could be a catch-all. If you would like to make an adjustment, that is where I would propose an adjustment is made, is in that line. Use some of that money. Which would carry it forward. And the idea behind it would be that we will be able to offset some of these costs with ARPA funds. I agree with Judith's point, though, that this needs to be done very cautiously. And this right. is something that VLCT is very much on any ARPA presentation I have ever attended. They are cautioning towns against adjusting their budget for these ARPA funds because it will end and the money will not be there. So as, yeah. so you're either going to keep your tax rate flat and have a massive spike yeah, in a yeah, few yeah. years or, I know that. you yeah. know, you buffer. And, you know, yeah. what you and I discussed was we know that ARPA will be available. We can go look and I just need to figure out how yeah. all this exactly works yeah. in, in practicality. Yeah. 
we should be able to go and get the land digitization costs that we have incurred. We yeah. should be able to reclassify some of those funds is what my hope is and now call those ARPA. I want to go find these things that are in our books yeah. that we have spent money on that we can identify and then essentially reclassify them to ARPA. Right. I just need, I just don't know yeah, yeah. how that exactly works just yet. But that's fine. I just in thinking about our timeline to adopt the budget and how we can, I, I personally think that we should keep our tax rate down and below the six cents in the expectations in the following year, it's not going to be 15 or 16 cents. Yes, we can go down to three or four cents at a, a little less level, not shortfalling ourselves and using our available funds to do that. I just don't see how people are going to, I'm, I'm feeling the tax barrier. If, if they got to go up six to eight or 10 cents on our side of it, we should be able to tweak that a little bit. Yeah. Just for clarity, Seth, if I may, uh, yeah. Michael Dwayne, um, the, I'm looking at the Washington Central here. The, uh, the warned budget for the school yeah. is, a, uh, is, a, is a nine cent in right, right. It's a nine point nine. It's a nine point nine eight budget increase, and result, then, resulting in a nine cent right increase for East Montpelier. Exactly. Yeah, that's my thought. Right? Yeah, and the CLA is eighty two point nine seven, which means we have to have a replace. And I still think that the CLA being low is what the state puts its calculations on as far as the contribution comes from the state. But some of us feel that that doesn't matter. The school is its own wheelhouse. I'm saying, as a, as a, as a representative of the town, that um, we are the ones that send the tax bill out. And we, anything we can do to mitigate people's circumstances, probably we should do. But anyway. Judith has her hand raised. Right. Yeah. Um, the impact of any reappraisal is going to hit next year. Um, uh -huh. And then, you know, taxpayers are going to be you know, we're all going to be paying more no. than we're paying this year. Um, not on the reappraisal. It doesn't make you pay more money. The it's, tax rate. Always the tax rate. Unless you go over, unless you go over fifty percent. If everybody's at fifty percent, the average is fifty percent. Anybody that goes over a fifty percent increase will pay more in taxes. It all depends on where your property comes in when it's reappraised. Yeah. And if the average household only goes up fifty percent, say your property value is worth two hundred thousand. And say say it goes up to three hundred thousand, and everybody's goes up fifty percent. Then everybody who goes up fifty percent pays just pays a lower rate. They pay the same amount of taxes. Yeah. But if for some reason your house was undervalued uh, below yeah. everybody else's, yeah. Then and you go up seventy five percent, then you pay that extra twenty five percent. You don't have to write that all down. <laughs> okay. Wait, go ahead, Judith. But I'm right. Go ahead. I know. No. Yeah. No, I, I, I appreciate that, but I think there may be a number of older homes who fit in the category that you just described, that their properties haven't been, you know, reappraised for, you know, a year or, you know, decades and have benefited from that and are going to get hit. So I, again, I, 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 think that this during the 11th hour, we shouldn't be making changes like this. Um, I think that we're going to, I don't think that this year is an outlier. I think that next year, um, you know, we may have some unforeseen expenses or, you know, inflation is going to continue. I'm, I'm not sure, but I, and we also don't know whether or how what we're proposing you know, is sanctioned by ARPA. And I I don't feel comfortable requiring that Gina and Michelle scramble tomorrow morning to try to figure it all out before they no, submit the budget. That. So I, you know, I, I appreciate the, the desire to maintain level funding, but that's not the reality of what the economics that we're facing. And maybe we should think about other ways to, you know, what we can do to support our town folks in the town, but I don't think we should be massaging the budget based upon the ARPA funds um, when we have some, you know, anticipated projects that we know would fit on, would qualify for ARPA um, funds or reimbursement. I'm just, 
I, I caution our making this change at this late hour and binding us. And I think in a year or two, we're going to see this spike and we don't we won't have the piggy bank to fall back on and people be like, well, what happened? So. So one question that I have is, so this yeah. is essentially a preliminary calculation of a tax rate, correct? I mean, we're doing our budget, but we are not setting right. the rate today. No, nope. we set the rate when we get our final. I did, yeah, I did that, I think, in like August yeah. when I yeah, count. Right, and, and we get our so, final figures on the on the, uh, uh, on the trade values in the town, and we take all those values, add them up, yeah. and, and put, a, put something against the percentage yeah. that comes up with the money that we need. Yeah. Right. So, we haven't said it right. And that's a good point. But the thing is. So uh, we would cause some initial anxiety potentially among residents. But realistically, before we're actually setting right. the, sex, the uh -huh. tax rate, uh -huh. we should have answers to these questions. Yeah. And we should be able to make adjustments accordingly. I, I don't know how. Well, that, that was a question that I had in my mm -hmm. mind, too, is when we do that, I've always thought of that exercise of setting the tax rate as being strictly a computational exercise. Yeah. To we, we look at the budget that the voters uh, passed. Yeah. We looked at the school budget that the voters passed. We look at how much money the state is contributing to the school and all that comes together to amount of revenue needed. We have our grand list uh, and we figure out the tax you rate. Math and yeah. 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 So that, that's, that's how I thought of it. I, I think what you're suggesting, and I don't know if this is the case, that uh, we, we could... We could change the budget at that point. Mm -hmm. No, you can't vote it's after they vote on. Yeah. You can't change the budget. We can't decide to I don't use, use extra yeah. funds. Or can so. you add a line into your calculation that is uh, an adjustment? I mean, I, I I don't know. I mean, that's, well, no. That's, what you could do is just say we're going to set the tax rate at X Y Z. You could do that. You yeah, don't have to do. But we could put math behind it to to no, get no, to the X Y Z. Okay, you could do the math. Leave the budget right where it is. Of course. And then you could. Yeah, the that. budget can't change. No. But we could. Yeah. Reforecast and calculate a tax rate based on that reforecast, or show the delta between <laughs> the forecast and the budget. That can be a number in the computation that that Carl was just discussing. I, I think you know. I don't know. I don't know, but I thought the same thing because we're not setting the tax rate tonight. Mm -hmm. We're putting for not till June, budget. right? Usually, no August, August, August. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thought it was the beginning of August. Yeah, yeah. depends when you send so, the tax bill. Yeah. out. I just think we'd be in a better position to have this discussion if we take some months to talk. Oh about no, it. I I realize that more knowledge will come to a better decision, mm -hmm. but I'm just putting it forth mm -hmm. of a strategy. <laughs> that could be employed. Um, now, the other thing that does happen is the state doesn't, we don't have the final figures from the state on what the contribution is. Exactly. Yeah. That's that's a guessing game. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know how that's gonna work out either because we get our figures <laughs> later on from the school, right? Yeah. Your grand list could go up too this year too because of all the house sales that have happened yeah, and all this. Taking a very modest, modest house sales has nothing to do with it. But the brief, the, those houses should be charged, your taxes uh -huh. be charged. It's, uh -huh. a, it's a yeah on, yes. on those houses they, no they will be appraised at a high no the i know they don't do it a lot based on sales you can't do that the state has to do that if you if they say you have a agreements uh, okay and they come and agree the taxes my understanding is you can change the the rate of the land and you can change certain components of the appraisal but you can't do it based on sales. So if you think a house, if a house was appraised for two hundred and fifty thousand, yeah. and then you sold it for four hundred and fifty thousand, right. I would can't think that. Sales. Just wait a second. I know. Don't you no, think that saying. that would trigger a yep. reappraisal of that house? Yeah. And then they would go in and reappraise and say, "Yeah, this is in fact as well. Maybe it's not four hundred fifty thousand, even though they paid it. Maybe it's worth four hundred thousand. You know that I, doesn't that trigger? That should okay, trigger a reappraisal. Common, common sense would tell you that, but that's not, I believe, how it works. Oh, never mind. It's okay. I know what you're saying. So keep in mind we have had some new residences constructed yeah. in town. That always helps a little bit. Your appraisal will go. Uh, your brand list will go up a little bit. It will. Those will yeah, it generally goes up a little bit. Tiny. On a percentage basis, it's very small. Right. You have a you have a three hundred million dollar brand right. list. Four hundred million. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's small. A couple of houses don't, don't make much of this. anything at all. Right. It goes up a little bit and it helps. But. Right. But if <laughs> I know a little bit about this. <laughs> <Me too. laughs> I, I do myself, but that's okay. 
I don't understand this one thoroughly yet. It's dramatically different from my previous experience with. I know what you're saying. If the house sells for a lot more money, it could be reappraised and then taxes. It's be it's be a lot but anyway, go ahead. But we're yeah, getting. I was about to ask, Deb. Were you about to say something? I was going to ask if Deb, Deb, maybe have some. Yes, thoughts. I. I was just going to say um, a lot of what you said is pretty accurate. Um, but one thing you should keep in mind, if you're counting on there being a reappraisal to rejigger everything, that's not going to happen really fast because well over 100 towns have been ordered to do reappraisals. There's a limited number of reappraisal companies out there to contract with, and they're yeah. already scheduling out several years. So yes. we've got to get on somebody's waiting list now. And I, think, yeah, I think the, uh, the uh, VLCT so, legislative... Yeah. Sorry. At the VLCT legislative um, briefing today, I believe the number that was given was the reappraisal capacity in the state is for like 15 towns per year. Oh, yeah, I, I heard I heard 16. Yeah. yeah. And the point yeah. is, the point is they're already starting to schedule, you know, like 2026 or 2027 or something ridiculous. And that's a problem because that means our CLA will remain low for several years. The only thing that'll help it is if the housing market cools down a little bit. They're always right. going to take a rolling average of the last three years. So they're going to lop off 2020 and add 2023 the next time. Yeah. 2020 was the first year of the pandemic, and that's when it started. So, yeah. you know, it could cool off a little bit, and the, and the CLA could actually go up. But having dropped below 85, we need to do the reappraisal. We need to do a reappraisal anyway. It's been since 2009 since we did it. And yeah. what I think it was John was just saying, there are houses out there. Not a lot of them, but there are houses out there that went for way more than they were appraised for. Clearly, they've been completely gutted inside and completely, you know, remodeled or something because, you know, and they haven't been looked at since 2009 because they didn't get a permit to put something like a garage on. So there was nothing to trigger the listers to go out and look at it. Well, internal stuff doesn't have to be, you don't have to have a permit unless you're adding bedrooms and things. Right. So, so you, you know, know. There, are, there, are, there are places that are flying below the radar and, you know, they will go up and they will help overall but so Deb, as far as whether what? or not it triggers a reappraisal because it, it sold for more than it was appraised for that doesn't trigger it. you can't go chasing sales mm -hmm. but if you if you become aware of the fact that they've done some significant improvements to it then you can go out and legitimately go and reappraise it of course you're still using 2009 cost tables you're never going to bring it up to the fair market value for the current market unless you're doing a town-wide reappraisal and that's the whole point of it so we go, okay. we can go out and look at that. We can look, go out and look at that four hundred thousand dollar house that was on the grand list for two hundred fifty, and we can bring it up to maybe three hundred twenty five or whatever. But it's still using two thousand nine cost tables. We can increase the quality of the house. We can, you know, register the fact that they've done some improvements. But we're still working with a two thousand nine cost table. See? It means you can't say it's worth four fifty because it sold for four fifty. She's saying you got to use that table. For every single thing on it, and come up with a different amount. I think I heard what she said. Thank Very you. <laughs> but I'm glad you reiterated it for me. <laughs> <It's happening. laughs> but, yeah, but part of, part of the problem now going forward is we're going to be stuck with a low CLA for several years before we can get it jacked up. Okay. Um, we got to decide what to do about this budget continually. So it sounds like we can't make a readjustment quickly, correct? Well, we can with the way I mentioned to you the adjusting the number that I talked about that is somewhat of a catch-all number just keep in mind we will end with a deficit yes in 2023 so well, that I'm will likely be a use of ARPA funds mm -hmm. um you'll be chasing your tail calculated at around 100 it could be less I mean I, I don't know where Guthrie's costs will come in but we obviously all know that salaries are going to be higher in fiscal 23 and benefits than what were assumed in the original budget so you know, we're not in the same situation that the town has been in in years past where we're staring at a, a surplus going into the next year. Okay, so, so there's a thought about this, though. If, the, if we present the budget as we have and everyone passed it, then we're going to assume that people are going to accept it. It still gives us an opportunity to perhaps change the tax rate when we, when we do it. But if they turn it down, which could happen, if they say, you know what, we're so sick of taxes, and this looks like a high budget, to turn it down, then we have the option at that point to decide. True. Yeah. Right. So that way, the route I'm suggesting keeps everyone happy in the room. 
and kicks the ball down the road is putting it to the taxpayers. They have the option to refuse this budget. For sure. And if they do, then we have the option to do something different. Right? Mm -hmm. And but we still a new town meeting. I don't know how yeah, call a special town meeting. Yeah. But it, it'd be but, called a special town meeting. Yeah. yeah. But you know, that's probably not gonna happen. But if it did happen, then we have the option to change the numbers. Right. And not only that, we still are talking about setting the tax rate in August and perhaps there's some room for us to work there. Perhaps. Perhaps. So I think there's I think the August approach is a is a good one. It yeah. gives us time yeah. to understand all of this. Yeah. Recalculating the budget, I would argue the only way you could do that would be to completely and re-envision what services this town provides. Yeah, I don't think you can I mean you could restructure the town office. There are we could restructure yeah. the road crew and we could relay to residents what services would go away that the town provides. So no, that, if we, that would be a, a revised budget in, in my in, in my thought, if the town turned it down then we could perhaps put some ARPA funds in certain line items and present a budget that might be a little bit more acceptable. That's all I'm saying. Because you have a true budget shortfall at that point. Right, so because the town mm -hmm. turned it down. Right. Um, so I just think that's an option. That I'm not saying it's going to happen, probably won't, but it could happen. Mm -hmm. If it did, that gives us, an op it gives us the opportunity to change some numbers with a little more knowledge. Mm -hmm. The other option, of course, is the tax rate. When we mm -hmm. get to get to that point, we'll have more knowledge anyway. We'll have more knowledge about the school and we may have um, some thoughts about changing that tax rate and we'll have more knowledge at that point. And keep in mind some of the things I'm mentioning that are use of ARPA funds, such yeah. as the land records idea yeah. and things like that, those aren't ongoing expenses. I'm, I'm talking about right. covering historical expenses that we have exactly. already One time. flowed through the general fund. Yeah that we can then recoup yeah. and kind of give us a credit back. Yeah, right. yeah. So it doesn't create that issue that VLCT is warning people about, about right. just covering your costs and covering your salary. I think it's very risky to say, well, we're gonna use it to cover salary costs. Well, unless you're planning a significant reduction no, in the force in the future, yeah. that's that's a temporary fix. Yeah, that's awesome. It's obvious that you're not going to spend yeah. money and then all of a sudden you don't have the money to spend. But anymore. the things I'm talking about would be real right. reallocation of costs that the town has incurred yeah. to apply those to ARPA. Yeah. One-time expenses to kind of reimburse. Exactly. Yeah. Things that we basically just ate yeah, yeah. because right. we could. Yeah. Now we can use ARPA for it. Yeah. So I think that we need to move on. I think we need to approve this budget. So yeah. I mean, much against my better judgment, we're going to have to. But... So I move to approve the budget as presented. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. aye. I'm going to abstain. So four ayes and one abstention. All right. So. That takes care of 40, no. finalization of 2024 budget. Um, finalization of 2023 town meeting warning. So the main change, well, one was if the budget at this point, this number now will hold that you see in this in this morning, um, but. Lauren Oates um, has resigned from the Planning Commission. So yeah. we have added a line here for Planning Commissioner to a three year term. Yeah. Um, if the select board would like to try to, you know, we appoint, uh, we may end up appointing because I don't believe we have a candidate running for this particular position um, right now. So the select board is likely going to end up appointing anyway. So I'm not sure, Rosie, what. You walk me through what we need to do here with, with this position. Yeah, that's the last one down there, two or three yeah. year term. Yeah. So oh. that's not on the, it shouldn't be on the, it's not going to be on the ballot. Yes, it, it will. By putting it here, it will be. But yes, this is what you are deciding tonight. Yeah. Yes, Rosie. So the way this works, when somebody resigns just before a town meeting or before a ballot, we then either appoint someone to complete until March, until town meeting, and then they run for the remainder of the term. So the, 
as far as I'm aware, there's nobody to appoint at this point, but we do need to show on the ballot that we have an open position that is two okay. years of a three-year term. Yeah. And somebody could write somebody somebody in. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right. So this if somebody steps forward with a write-in campaign and they get elected, so they yeah. would serve out two years <laughs> before they'd be up for that's correct. That's if they get elected. But if they get appointed, it, it's only for one year. And then they, the next so the next left, an appointment can only happen if fewer than 30 votes are got are received by a write-in candidate. So basically, if someone decides to do a write-in and they get 30, 30 votes or more, they're in for the next two years. Right. I, yeah, they're in for the next two years. But if no one gets voted in by a write-in campaign, then the appointment that we would make is for one year. That's correct. If and no one runs, run. no yeah. one wins, you would appoint them for a year and then they would run for the remaining year of the term. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I think it would be clearer. I mean, it's, it's unclear to me what this means, planning commissioner to a three-year term. Um, it maybe if it said two years of a three year term, yeah, this, this is the standard ballot language, Carl. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to make it more clear to people who are reading it. Maybe remaining two years of three year term or something like that. That would be even clearer. It should be two years of the remaining three-year term. <laughs> Why don't we just say it in French? Not remaining two years. Well, I guess it could be remaining two years. It doesn't matter in the episode. Oh. Wants what? <laughs> sure. Sure, we did. There are certain ways that it has to be worded. Okay. So right. I'm going to leave it up to our ballot people at LHS to make that determination. But I'll make, make it clear to them that this is yeah. the remainder of a three-year term. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we should put it in the way that, that we want it to be. And if somebody objects to it, then, then they can do that. Well, that could actually nullify the election, Carl. We don't want to do that. I thought you said you were going to check with legal advice tomorrow. No, I said I'm going to send it to LHS. LHS is the, the ballot printer who has all the guidelines. Uh huh. So I think what Carl is saying, could we write it in the way that the select board is requesting and then they can adjust language, but Deb would also, do you know how quickly they would respond? Because Deb would also need to know this as well for printing of the, the annual reports. Well, they're doing 250 plus school ballots, school and town ballots over the next 48 hours. So. Um, the turnaround will be pretty quick, but yeah, I, I guess what I'm saying is the the language has to be a certain way. Yeah. And we, we can't arbitrarily change that language, but I'll let them know that this is how we want it to be said. And if they tell me, no, we can't do that, then no, we can't do that. Then you just leave it the way it is. Fine. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what is it that we... Remaining two years of three-year term. Okay. We have used the same language for years. There's nothing new about the way this is being expressed and we haven't had any problems with it in the past. Well, maybe I'm the only one who's ever looked at it and scratched my head, but. <laughs> Rosie. Yes, sir. Does, um, the, does the ballot have to match what the warning says? Yes. Mm, it doesn't, it never, it, I'm looking at what the ballot is on page two, or page one rather. Of ballot? last, like, take last year's report. Um, the ballot's on page three, excuse me. On page three, we said planning commissioner for one of three years. And on the warning in that same book, 
on the warning, it says one of three year term. So it's not identical. Yeah, it's not exactly. And the warning should have been changed. Well, again, it's, yeah. it's, been this way for, it's been this way for years. So it's just, you know, in a rut. But if we want to change it, I would say match the ballot, make it for one of three years. Yeah, it has to match the ballot. Okay, good. It doesn't, it doesn't really match the ballot. The ballot has the names on it. We don't put the names on it. So it's, it's kind of a, it's a different thing, but it's basically one of three years. Yeah. And that's what, that's what it says on the ballot, one of three, for one of three years. I don't know. I, I don't think it's caused a problem being this way no. for decades. I, I, I'm not. It doesn't matter to me, but Kyle's the one that seems more invested in this discussion. I, I like Stephanie. I think, I think it would be more elegant to say one year of three year term or something like that, if that's what the problem is, that you want it to be clear it's one year of a three year term. So two years, two of years year of year three year term would be clear. But... I'm sorry, I'm looking at last year's town report. Yeah, sorry. Okay. So we have our language. So am I going with two years of three year term? I'm making this change live because this document I intend right. to have signed tonight by the select board members here. Mm -hmm. So I can give this to Rosie tomorrow. So if we're going to change it. We may as well make it as clear as we can. So remaining two years of three year term. Okay. As long as that language is going to pass the must powers be. that be. Yeah. And if it doesn't, then yeah. it doesn't. I'm going to ask this question because so am I capitalizing the R in remaining or <laughs> keeping that lowercase? I keep that lowercase. Lower case, I was please. keeping it lowercase, but. So I have remaining two years of three-year term. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Going to the printer right now. Anything else <laughs> on this document? Has anyone had a chance to look at it? You know. I just want to point out that we had said last meeting that we would have a discussion at town meeting about um, how to respond in the case of increased illnesses or other circumstances. Uh, using powers granted by the state to uh, have town meeting entirely by Australian ballot, the way we had we did this last year, for example. And uh, I guess today or Friday, the governor signed the bill that gives towns power to do that through uh, July of 2024, and then and you know do some other things as well. And the legislature is considering a bill now to make more permanent changes in our ability to do that. And I think a discussion here at the town meeting, as we talked about last time, would be helpful in providing feedback to our three senators and our one elected representative. So my memory, and um, Mr. Moderator, please help me out, or anybody can help me out with it, but my memory is that the way that we have handled such discussions in the past, it's not going to be a, a binding vote, a regulation, an ordinance, or anything. It's just going to be a discussion to provide guidance. Is that it happens under Article 16 to transact any other business that may properly come before the meeting, and we don't need to put anything special about that in, in the warning. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So we could just say that on the floor. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. And we, we can say that at the town forum. And yeah. Publicize it otherwise, we don't do it. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. We don't need to put anything in the warning. All right. Okay. This is not binding. Right. Right. It gets the flavor in the room. Right. What are you going to do? Say if everyone's sick, you want to tell me? Or we'll let the wisdom of the call make the verdict happen. Okay. All right. So we're okay with um, making a motion to pass this thing. Yes. Okay. Let's do it. Yeah. I move to approve the town meeting warning as uh, as amended. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Guys appear to have it, they do have it. Should that have read um, the town meeting on the town forum uh, warning, or do we want to have a separate motion for the town forum? Oh, we haven't looked at the town forum. Okay. But they're, they're all in the same. 
paper, we sign under both of them at once. So I guess with a cons unanimous consent, uh, I will ask that the motion be considered to have covered the town forum warning as well. Sounds good. Okay, okay. that's the town forum. Okay. Rosie has her hand raised. Yes, Rosie. I'd just like to remind everyone who's participating remotely today, who is a board member, that I'll need you to have you come into the office tomorrow to sign, please. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I'll be gone. <laughs> well, as long as we have the quorum and we've got three. Okay. Yeah, we have three, three years. Three years. Okay. Sorry about that. That's all right. Well, I'm sorry, but. But we will live. <laughs> the next item consideration. Uh, oh no, finalization of select board report for 2022 town report. Okay, so so really no changes here. This is just it yeah. would have needed to change if the budget changed, right? At this point, it has not. So, yes, okay. I move to approve the select board report as presented now. There's nothing about the fire department budget in here. Well, the fire department budget is referenced in the budget impact. Yeah, but... but that's it. No specific numbers. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. I don't think we have to have a motion for that. We have a new one. I don't think you had a motion no, for that last year. I think you just say it's okay. Yeah, okay. fine. Great. Okay. Oh. Incredible. It's good. Thank you. Um, oh, consideration of Deputy Chief Warden's position description. So, Paul and Jeff drafted some language so that we can try to recruit a deputy tree warden and they asked that I present that language to you and then I will put a post on front porch forum put a post on the website with this description and encourage a resident or multiple to hopefully come forward and express interest look good to me um is this um, is it clear here that it's unpaid or is paid? Um, that was it actually it actually has a thousand dollar. I think it's a thousand dollar stipend. Stipend. I think it mm -hmm. was a thousand. Uh, would we want to include that just because someone might think it's, you know, a salary? Yeah, salary position or something more than a a volunteer gig with a stipend attached. Well, I guess I'll call and ask. Yeah, stipend available, you could write. Or stipend right. will be paid. Or you just say this is an unpaid position and you're expected to volunteer like the rest of us. That's nice. <laughs> it is. Maybe a modest stipend is available or something like that. That sounds good. That mm -hmm. sounds good. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I, I suggested the yeah, available. Modest. <laughs> I suggested the available first, but then I realized um, haven't haven't we forced the uh, the tree warden to accept the stipend? It, yeah. it's not really this available. It will be paid. A modest stipend is uh, included in the position. Yeah. yeah. Compensation is a mile is a modest stipend or something like that. Yeah, you will not be compensated, but you will get a title. <laughs> <laughs> you will be compensated with love. Oh, really? Is that what you want to say? <laughs> okay. And all the trees you want to hug. <laughs> yeah, tree huggers are considered valid, right? Something. Can I, can I ask a question? Uh, yeah, uh, I haven't wrapped my head around this yet, but in the Select board report. Yeah. Uh, I guess this is a question for you, Gina. I didn't I didn't do the uh, number crunching myself, but I see that you've got the fire department. Where is it now? I can't find it. Uh, fire department costs went up 25.9K or 1.3%. Yeah. 
but on the front that's, side, a, that's that's an impact of the overall budget the 1.3 percent on their budget no oh, this is okay so in other words their budget went up six percent it, it the, represents a 1.3 percent of pound the nine point eight. Yeah. correct okay I know yeah, it's kind of hard to present said, those because you're trying to. You said all the changes result in April. Actually. Well, that's the tax increase. Well, I'm I'm showing the six percent increase on the fire department page, so you can see how much it actually went up in terms of that individual budget and the yeah. ambulance. Page too. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, so so you're saying the twenty five point nine per uh, thousand, or yeah, twenty five point nine thousand is what percentage of their budget, not 1.3? No, it's, it's quite a bit more than that, yeah. So you would see those <laughs> details in our, in the detailed budget, that what their particular line went No, on. yeah, I know. But right. it's, it's also on the fire department page where I put the budget for the fire department and the ambulance. The fire department went up 6%, the ambulance 6.4%. I think it's misleading to say 1.3%. I mean, it's tough. I mean, here I'm trying to explain the total impact to the overall town no, budget, guess. not each individual line item. So why are you just saying East Montpelier is tough, 25.9, or, and it should be 6.7%. Well, presumably in, this applies to all the parentheticals in that set. Yeah. The 1.3. The 2.3, the 4.8, and the 1.3. Right. What I'm trying to kind of explain yeah, is yeah, what's yeah. where that 9.8 is coming from. Right. That's right. what this is trying to explain, not each line item, what its increase is. Yeah, exactly. Okay, 4.538, comma, accounting for 2.3% of the increase. And then the next two, you could just have the number and then a semicolon and the percentage. Does that be clear? I'm flexible. Go for it. No, I, I, I think it's right the way it is. Because yeah, I like the way it is. I think it's fine. Yeah, yeah because you're just, it's a cumulative thing. You're, you know, yeah, we're talking about the total budget exactly, here, not exactly. identifying not each line item. Just that one thing. Is. So that I think it's fine. Yeah, or it. or maybe even on the last line, you know, the aggregate or the sum of all these changes results in an eight point six percent tax increase or five point eight cents. That's yeah, that that fine. It's fine the way she did. Yeah. It's the general fund has increased nine point eight percent, primarily due to the following thing. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. Fine. yeah. That's yeah. Fine. It's good. Very great. Okay, so going back to what we're on. Oh, deputy warden, we're good with that. <laughs> I think so. Yes, I will add language about that there that a stipend compensates. I'll figure out what to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah something you know appropriate. Is that way it comes with a stipend. Comes with a modest stipend. <laughs> Fine. Modest stipend to be paid. In some places where towns don't give stipends, that would be more than a lot. Modest. Yeah, mm -hmm. but can measure it with hours sometimes. Yeah. It's modest. Yes. So, okay. Are we done with that item, the deputy fee warden? Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> um, so this is, are you, are you back for the next one? I am, and it uh, looks like you might, the next item has a town meeting component to it, so you might want to sit around for it, stick around for it. Oh, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> the next item is discussion on town management in light of COVID-19. And we uh, discussed in previ a previous meeting saying something somewhere, uh, requesting people to wear masks to the town meeting. And uh, and we talked about the sort of language we use. And based on that discussion, I I don't know if somebody, someone else has drafted some language for that, but I, I put together some language for that that uh, I'd like to run by you. And that is, um, all who attend town meeting are requested to wear high quality masks comma N95 or similar. We want everyone in our community to feel safe attending town meeting and many people are immunocompromised, live with someone who is immunocompromised or would otherwise benefit from widespread mask use in a crowded indoor space. We said we wanted a recommendation and we wanted to emphasize that this was being done to include more people in it. Does that uh, satisfy the will of the select board? I don't like the request. Yeah, I don't like, I, I thought we talked about this last week, maybe encouraged or, you know, encouraged. Request is the word. Yeah, I don't like request. That's your, yeah. And I don't know if I would specify N95, actually. Yeah. 
I know that that's the most advantageous, but I don't know if I would specify that. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, no, it might be. Just an example, it says, I, let me read it again. All who attend are requested to wear high quality mask, comma, N95 or similar. No. Okay, give me something more, please. More. More than no. I would just <laughs> just I, me out here. Do it. Well, go, go ahead. Well, go ahead. Well, what I would I would just leave I would just say mask is definitely encouraged. You know, I think the rest of the language, I would not specify the kind of mask at all. That's mask my use. suggestion. Mask use is encouraged. Yes, that's exactly what I would say. Period. That's it. Okay. Yep. And yep. we also said we'd be providing masks. It's just um, we can do that. yeah. We can do that, sure. Rosie, do you have your hand up? I do. Um, I wanted to um, kind of remind you of how we handled the mask situation throughout the pandemic. We are not permitted to require the wearing of masks. It's out. It's against the law. We're so, aware of that. So, but we are absolutely permitted to, as we did during elections, put up a sign that says, "Numbers are up." Please wear your mask and have those masks available at the door. So I'm not I'm not sure if that will comply with what you're actually requesting or if we need to actually say more. I'm happy to put notices in front porch forum making the request or the suggestion that because we are doing in-person town meeting and that COVID is still around, that masks will be available for all who wish to wear them and that they're they're suggested. I guess I want to make sure that nobody thinks that they can't vote because they're not yeah. wearing a mask. Absolutely. Yeah. We all agree. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Judith? Um, I yeah, no, I, I would concur with Amy's recommendation. I like the term encouraged um, and you know indicate masks will be available. Um, so we're encouraging people to wear masks and we're making them available. Yeah, me too. Yes, sir. If I may, yes, I like uh, masks are encouraged. Yeah. It has a certain. Yes, it has a nice ring. To it me. has a nice ring. To me. Yeah. Okay. So is, is there an appropriate place in the town report for this in conjunction with the town meeting warning or anywhere else, or should we just use front porch forum and town forum to spread the word and signs at the actual site? Hey, Carl. Um, oh. There are a couple of sections that are specifically about how to vote. Okay. And that include warnings like, you know, read your certificate envelope and that you have to request certain ballots this year. Maybe that would be a good place to yeah. encourage people to wear their masks. So in the town report on how to, the section on how to vote, okay? Deb, does that work for you? I can get your language tomorrow morning. Yes, on page 13 you're talking about, yep. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that's a good idea. Okay, so page, I will- page, thir page 13, I just will say, is facing the signature page of the warning, so it's a perfect place for it. Yeah, okay. So I will email the language to uh, yeah. Rosie and Deb, then, okay. Very good. Thank so you. it begins, masks are encouraged and they will be available. And then the rest of it has read before. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, is that, are you done with the COVID-19 stuff? That's, that's my uh, input. The town administrator had some input you in something? the report. Well, I mean, I'm presenting the numbers were low. I, I'm not, I don't 100% know how much these numbers tell us these days, but yeah. this is what the CDC is reporting. Right. Okay. John, do you have anything to say? Anybody nope. else? No. Okay. Uh, once we have once to sign, they're right here. It's not long. No, it doesn't feel long. It feels light. It feels like two pages. Uh, 
Um, how often do we pay the for the website? Um, it's like five hundred something bucks. It's I think it's like quarterly. Um, and what do they do for us? They host the website for us. Okay. So they run, we get regular updates to the WordPress site. Um, and then also if we have an issue <laughs> or a question, they're there to answer that. Okay. All right. Is there anything um, on your report you, know, you want to talk about? Well, we already discussed about Lauren Oates' position. Yeah. Um, I believe that the trash service that used to occur in the town office parking lot will no longer be happening. So I don't know if the select board has any thoughts on that, but I just wanted to let you all know that. Yeah, um, so we don't really have uh, concrete information on that, but what I was going to do is if the people that were doing it were assuming that they're going to start it up, um, I think we need to address it at that point. Here, did we read in the paper, right? What what, what happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. but, individual. but the, the, the principal is no longer involved in trash service, right. but there are relatives that are running a uh, trash service in Plainfield. It hasn't run here for a couple of weeks. Okay. We're not really sure what's going to happen. Yeah. So I'm saying that if they are coming to an assumption that they were just going to continue, we could address it at that point. At this point, we'll just. Yeah, we, we have not received any calls. Yeah. Of any residents. Yeah. Concerned or or missing the service, so yeah. it's. I know two well, weeks ago there was a sign in the parking lot that was directing people to go to Plainfield. That sign was not there this past week. Yeah. Um. So maybe. This happened. Yeah. I would just, can I just say something about that? Um, I talked to the cleaning lady who was in the office this weekend when I was working on the town report. And she is used to getting rid of all the stuff that's being purged out of the drawers and filling up garbage pails by giving them to that guy and getting rid of it for free. And now she's going to have to, she has been assuming the cost herself. And she just considers that it's her contract. So she's swallowing it. But if this is going to be a permanent thing that may affect her contract rate because she didn't expect to be paying for the trash disposal like that. Yeah, Rosie actually spoke to her on Sunday and um, I was going to get with Rosie and actually De Denise is, is helping us out right now, but see if Denise could call her because she should she should be able to adjust her yeah. her rate um, to, I mean, we should be paying those costs. Yeah. So. Yeah. Sounds good. Anything else? Um, I wanted to let everyone know that uh, not type. Oh, not from. Oh wait, what? No, no. Oh, it's a side problem. Oh, um, that Tyson, uh, the zoning administrator, will be out of the office the weeks of February twentieth and twenty seventh. Um, he's available if something comes up and he needs to come in, um, but he will not be holding his regular office hours. Um, so just to let the select board know that. Yep. And then I think everyone is aware of our future meeting schedule. February will be slightly different um, with February 13th and 27th. And then, of course, we get into the town meeting schedule in March. It'll be so sweet to be with you all on Valentine's Day Eve. Oh, there you go. Yeah. But okay. it's not Valentine's Day, it's Eve. Yeah, yeah. Um, Very nice. So, what, what about the um the town the request about uh the county road? Um I'm targeting February 27th for that. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Did you <throat> were you gonna say something? Else? I'm sorry to cut you off. Oh maybe that was uh, yeah, I was just um the sixth, which I guess is next Monday. I may or may not be able to appear remotely. I'll be traveling and I'm not sure if I'll be back yet. So I may or may not, it, um, if I appear, it'll be remotely, but I may be unavailable, not near any place where I can That's access. The you mean the 13th? 
the the six we move the dates to the 13th 27th okay. all right i'll see so, you on the 13th we did it just for you we did it for okay, you okay thank you all right sorry you, you do know you sent, a request. you sent a request to the site board you remember that <laughs> okay thanks <laughs> good thing you remember <laughs> yep okay um anything else to you yeah okay um did you get the warrant shots? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. already. Oh, already. Yeah, oh, yeah. Did you saw it, right, Carl? Yes. Was there anything else? No other business. No, unless we want to hear it. That's the only other business. I'm trying to make sure we have no other business <laughs> before we adjourn. We could adjourn <laughs> early. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can still discuss it. I make a motion that we adjourn uh, tonight's meeting, uh, January thirtieth, two thousand twenty-three, as a. Uh, the, He's both there, select word. Second. Oh, we second. have a second. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say what we say. Aye. 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 Aye